Welcome back to the last part of this tutorial. Now we will be actually working with real life data, working with data from the flood event that took place in Iran in 2019. And this will be done using the EO browser. So as you have now worked your way all the way through the end of the last topic of this course, what you will do is simply click on start exercise. After clicking on the button, you will directly arrive in the EO browser. And you will also arrive at the exact location that the practical tutorial will be taking place. So we are right above the city of Agala in Iran, in the northern province. And you can already see that uh, there's a visualization of the NDWI here, uh, indicating that on the 5th April, we did have quite uh, a large uh, flooding event here. So what you can do now is, first of all, if you're not familiar with your browser, you can go here to the top right and click on the I button that shows you an info. It already gives an indication of which kind of data collections are available on the platform. And from here on, you can, if you're not familiar with the browser, simply click on continue with the tutorial or use the button above this video to start a tutorial and get your hands on the EO browser for the first time if you're not familiar with it now. But we will not do that now. And Instead of that, we will be taking a first look at what the EO browser is showing us. So what you can see here is that the entire screen is divided into three vital parts. The first part is the sidebar that is this powerful tool right here. And this basically gives you information of the data collection that you're looking at, at the dates, at the visualization type that you want to use. So you can see that if you go to discover, you can hear basically pick any data collection you're interested in. For now, we will go with the Sentinel-2 data sets. You can do advanced search. So you can also say that you want the not pre-processed data, which is more or less the raw data that is provided by ESA. You can also select cloud coverage. Uh, similar things can be done for Lancer data as well. So what we will do now is simply uh, let's search for some data first. So we will select the dates that we're interested in. So we will go back to the end of March of 2019, say 24th, and select mid-April maybe. Okay, and then we will just filter by cloud coverage as well, and just hit search. And then obviously what we also need to do is select an area of interest. So you can do that by choosing this button right here. So you can just draw a rectangle of this area, go back to search and search again. And then it will always only show you the data that is relevant for your study site. And then we can just simply click on any uh, desired image. This is for example, the 10th of April. You can see that this image is still quite cloudy. So we can just simply look for one that has a bit more of, uh, of, of clear sky. So we just click to the left and get the next available shot. And that is actually from the 5th of, of, of April. So we can see that in this area, we can see quite good uh, the amount of, of flooded areas. And for now, we can also remove our area of interest here. So next to the sidebar, uh, another probably the most important part of this screen is the central part where we do have the visualization of the data collection that we selected and also the shot that we have selected. So in our case, it is a Sentinel-2 composite from the 5th of April. And then on the right side, we do have all these tools. I already mentioned the area of interest tool. So you can also uh, pinpoint an area, which is an area of interest, or an area of which you want to observe in terms of, uh, for example, temporal dynamics. Uh, then you also have the option to download imagery, which is also quite convenient. And you can also create time lapses. So if you select not only one time step, but a time duration, you can create time lapses over these uh, functions. But for example, uh, this can only be done if you're logged in using your, your free account. Then below that, we can also visualize terrain in 3D, which is also very interesting. And we have the option to use a histogram. And this is something we will also be doing later. So using the histogram function, you can easily see within your area of interest how the values are distributed and where your thresholds for different indices are. 
Again, quickly going back to the sidebar. If you want, you can also uh, select different languages here. So there's quite a variety of languages already available. And you can always um, change the background visualization using the Visualize tab here in order to maybe get a more clear view of certain, certain parameters. Um, you can also log in using this button. However, most of the functions that are needed for this tutorial do not need um, a login or a registration on the platform. However, we kindly invite you to also register on the website. It has great capabilities and it's very easy to use. Okay, so now that you're familiar with your browser, we will go ahead and create an actual flood mask. So you can already see we are here in Agala and uh, you can already see the flood extent. For this tutorial, we will be using the modified normalized difference water index. And to derive this index, we will just use the custom button to create our own index. So we will click here down here on custom. And there we already have the selection of bands that are available in our Sentinel selection. So you can see that also the uh, course 60 meter bands are included. But for our analysis, we are only interested in the green band and the shortwave infrared band uh, channel 11. So if you're here, you can see that this is only for the composites. So here you can, for example, create a false color compos composite using uh, the near infrared channel, the red channel and the green channel. So this will already give an indication, for example, of where vegetation is. But for our purposes, we want to create an index. So we will close this window and open up the custom index window. And this is a really interesting tool because here you can easily on the fly create your own indices using the data collections that are behind your browser. So we just go ahead and select the green band, which is channel three. And we use the short of infrared band, which is channel 11. And here we can now already see that automatically after choosing the right bands, a first index is calculated. So it's all on the fly, it's very fast. And to get a better visualization, because here we do have um, ranges. We have ranges of, of gray values and we don't want that. We would just want one, co one color because we are basically doing a binary classification. So we are selecting threshold and also change the color to blue. So this already changed the colors to blue. You can see that there might be a possible overclassification. This is why we would need to adjust those values. But to get a better understanding of where and how to change the values, we will do a comparison between the composite and the index first. So what we will do is we will simply um, select the index first and just leave it as, as it is and just hit compare. So this is the button for add to compare. So you can see that here in the compare tab, we do have now the index available, but what we also need is a composite. So we go back to uh, visualize, then go to composite, and then just use a, a true color composite. So we select red, green, and blue. So this is our true color composite, and we will also add this view to our compare tab. So now that we have both images here in the tab, we will just change the order of both in order to have the index above our, our base map basically. And here we have this nice uh, slider tool, which we can use to get a first glance of how our classification is working. And from this, we can get a first idea of whether our thresholds are correct or not. And we can see that we are possibly misclassifying uh, some areas here, probably a little bit over classifying. And so what we will do is go back to visualize, go back to index and change the thresholds here. So remember earlier in the presentation, we advised you to use the MND WI uh, values of uh, 0.2 as a first idea of a threshold. So we will just do that again, select the blue color and then just here set it to 0.2. So this will be our idea for now. Uh, then we just uh, add this uh, index here again, back to the compare button. We will remove the first one here. And then we can do again this kind of sliding technique here to see whether we are happy or not.
This is an essential tool to get a first idea of what it looks like. But if you want to get a better understanding, an even better understanding of what is happening and where we should choose our threshold, we can use the histogram feature that is shown here. And what this does is for our entire area that we are looking at, it will show us the pixel values, in this term, the frequencies of our um, index values. So you can see that we do have a lot of values that are below probably zero. So this is most probably all uh, yeah, non-water non bodies. And what we are most interested in are values that are in this area. So we will say that probably um, 0 0.2 could be a good value. So we would um, select this here and try to see if this works. You can also always zoom out and then just simply hit recalculate and then the histogram feature will already give you a different indication. Keep in mind that if you change your, your map view or you change your extent, your histogram will also change likewise. So from, from this you can already see that there is a certain, uh, a certain part that is probably related to the flood. So once you think that you find the right threshold for your flood mapping, you will just close the index view and open the custom script view. And what we can see here is basically an evil script. Uh, this is a script that describes the function that is sh showing what you see right now. So it um, includes the band names, it includes the band values, and it includes also the thresholds that you have um, set for your classification, which is uh, right here. So in our terms, it's here, it's already uh, zero to one, which is the initial state. And we will change this now to 0 0.2, for example, and also change the color again to get a better view. And then just go to custom script. And then we will copy all of this and transfer it back to the EO college. The next step will be to use the script that you just copied from the EO browser and to paste it back on the EO college platform. So you can just go here to your exercise results field. And here you can simply paste the entire custom script that you just took from the your browser. And then once you're confident, you can just click the submit your result button. This will take you a few seconds because we have a target and that is compared to your result. After a couple of seconds, you will receive a message from the your college saying that your result has been stored. So we will store your result in the background and it is now being reloaded uh, on, the, on the page. After hitting OK, you will be redirected to our website, to our topic. And if you scroll all the way down, you will now see your result compared with the original result that we designed. And you can compare your, your ideas or your threshold to the one that we have pre-selected. So you can use this slider here uh, easily to possibly see differences. So you can see where your result may be different from the ones that we provided. And you will also get a percentage of how your result corresponds to the target that uh, we defined. To pass this tutorial, you will have to get a score of at least 75%. And as you can see in our case, we have 93% here, so we would have passed the tutorial. So you can see here that you will get your latest results. You can download your results. You can also download the target image, so the comparison image. And you can also, again, show hide your script if you want to have a look at that as well. If you're not happy with your result yet, you can go uh, back to the browser simply by clicking on this uh, link right here. And you will be, again, redirected to the browser. And you can simply go through the workflow again. You can just explore the many other possibilities you have in the browser and can just try to get an even better or even a perfect result and then bring it back to the college for some validation. So once you're done with your classification and you're happy with your result, um, this practical part is finished. We hope you enjoyed the course and now have fun and enjoy the last part of this tutorial of this course, which will be the quiz.